Okay, so in this lecture, we're going to look at another important distribution called the Poisson distribution. So that's the Poisson distribution. Okay. And so one way to think about it is this. So you recall that for the binomial distribution, this is our PDF. So recall binomial where we had where we had p of x equals k this is n choose k theta to the power k 1 minus theta to the power n minus k okay so that's the binomial so now what we're going to do is we're going to let theta be some parameter lambda over n, okay? And the idea, idea is that we're going to make the probability of success very small. So suppose probability of success is very small. And the way we're going to do this is by saying we need a large number of trials. We need a large number of trials to get uh, success. In other words, we want n large. Okay. And so I'll give you a little preview of the answer, and then I'll show you how we get there. Okay. So preview. So P of X equals K, that's going to be lambda to the power K, K factorial times e to the minus lambda, okay? And so for this distribution, lambda is going to be the parameter, okay? So how do we get there? So here's the derivation. So we're gonna start by writing out the binomial distribution differently. So binomial in terms of lambda, okay? So P of X equals K. So we're going to also write the N choose K part differently as well, okay? So that will be equal to N times N minus one times N minus two all the way down to N minus K plus one all over k factorial. Okay, so this is the same thing as n choose k. All right, since it's is equal to n factorial over k factorial times n minus k factorial. All right, because basically these contain all the terms from n minus k down to one, and that gets rid of those terms, those same terms on the top, okay? And then here, so where we had theta, we're going to replace that with lambda over n to the power k. And then 1 minus theta would be 1 minus lambda over n to the power n minus k. Okay? And so what we're going to do from here is we're going to simplify parts of this. Okay? So the first part we're going to simplify is this part. And the second part we're going to simplify is this part. Okay. So let's work with that first item. And so what we're doing now is we're going to ask what happens as n approaches infinity. Okay. 
So this is also, by the way, one of the first few times we're going to be applying calculus in this course. And you'll see that calculus features heavily in probability in general. Okay, so let's begin with that first term in the green. So basically what we have is we have n times n minus 1 all the way up to n minus k plus 1. And then from that bottom term, we have n to the power k. Okay? But this is really, so there are also k of these items. And what we can do is we can give each of the n's to each of these terms. Okay, and so we get 1 times 1 over, well, 1 minus 1 over n, all the way up to 1 minus k plus 1 over n. Actually, this might be a minus. Doesn't really matter, though. Because, basically, you can see, as n approaches infinity, all these terms approach 0. And what you end up with is just 1. Okay? So that whole term goes away as n approaches infinity. So now let's consider the other term we were looking at, which is 1 minus lambda over n to the power n minus k. Okay, and it helps to split this up into two parts. So we have 1 minus lambda over n to the power n, and then we have 1 minus lambda over n to the power of minus k. Okay? And then we want to take the limit of this. So the limit as n approaches infinity, 1 minus lambda over n to the power n times 1 minus lambda over n to the power of minus k. And recall that you can split up limits in this way. So since it's a multiplication, we have like this times lambda over n minus k like that. Okay, so for this, you recall that this is our definition of the exponential function. In particular, this would give us e to the minus lambda. Okay, so that gives us e to the minus lambda. And then for the second term, there's only one n down here, so this approach is 1. So in total, it's just e to the minus lambda. Okay? And so if we look at what is left, so we're left with k factorial, and we're left with lambda to the power k, and this reduces to e to the minus lambda. Okay? So if we put it all together, all together, we get p of x equals k, this is equal to lambda to the power k, k factorial, so that's what was left over, and then we have e to the minus lambda, which we just derived. Okay, okay, so notation for this, so notation, so again, the parameter is lambda, so we'll say x is a sample from Poisson and the parameter lambda. Okay. Note also that there's another interpretation of the lambda parameter uh, that we'll discuss later and I think is more common in actual applications. So interpretation of lambda later. Okay. But for now, you can think of it in the way that we uh, derived it here. Okay? And as usual, we're going to do an exercise. So again, I would leave this to you to do by yourself. Since it's not that difficult to show that the PD PMF sums to 1. So does it sum to 1? Okay, and so as usual, we want to define what the support is. So support. So as you recall for the binomial, it's 0 up to n, but 
in this case, because we're taking n to infinity, k also goes to infinity. So k in 0, 1, 2, 3, up to infinity. Okay. And we want to show that this k equals 0 up to infinity, lambda to the power k, k factorial e to the minus lambda. We want to show that this sums to 1. So notice that this does not depend on k, this term. So we can bring that outside. k equals 0 up to infinity, lambda to the power k, k factorial. So we want to show that this essentially sums to e to the lambda. Okay? Now, one way you can do this is to just recognize that this is the Taylor series expansion for e to the lambda, and then you're done. But if you want to check that this actually works, that this is in fact e to the lambda, you could take the derivative and show that you get the same thing, which is also one of the definitions of e to the lambda. So you can check. So d by d lambda, sum k equals 0 up to infinity, lambda to the power k, k factorial. OK, and this is d by d lambda. And this is 1 plus lambda plus lambda squared over 2 factorial plus lambda 3, 3 factorial, and so on and so forth. OK? But notice that when you take the derivative, so this goes away. The first term goes away. That's 0. This turns into 1. This turns into, so you bring the 2 down. So it's plus lambda since 2 divided by 2 is 1. And then lambda 3, that becomes 3 lambda squared. So the 3s cancel out. And then you get lambda squared over 2 factorial and so on and so forth. So you can see that it's still the exact same sum. Therefore, this is um, e to the lambda.